What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. My name is David Greenspan. I'm your host of the Mindshare Podcast. This is season four. And for all additional podcasts, you can find us at Mindshare101.com. This week's episode is sponsored by Kits Keep In Touch Systems and our friends over at the Buzz Conference. Now, be sure to follow the Buzz on Instagram at the Buzz Conference. Uh, give them a visit at their website, www.thebuzzconference.com. Keep up with everything that they're up to including this upcoming event called Disruption, which is taking place on March 30th, 2023. So again, head on over to www.thebuzzconference.com, grab your tickets, and uh, hey, we'll see you there. We're proud to have the Buzz Conference as an ongoing sponsor of the Mindshare Podcast. Of course, Kits is always with us. I mean, how could they not be? Um, this is our baby. This is our marketing powerhouse. This is our machine that we've created for you guys. And uh, hey, it really is a powerhouse. And if you haven't checked it out yet, I mean, wh what are you waiting for? Let's go. This is the type of stuff that helps you build a lot of mind shares so that you get more market share. I am totally excited to, uh, to let you know, if you haven't heard yet, early bird ordering for the WOW calendars is now open. Now, for those of you that know what the WOW calendars are, you're like, I know you're just flocking to the website right now. Um, for those of you that don't, <laughs> you are missing out. Like, you got to go check this out. This is the most customized, most personalized calendar you could possibly buy. And I know, I know people sit around going like, a calendar, dude, for real? Um, yeah, this will make your phone ring more than you get, like, more calls than you get on your birthday. Um, so just check it out. Again, go over to my website, mindshare101.com. Click on marketing up at the top right. You can check it out. Uh, we'll set you up with our team. They'll tell you more about it. And hey, speaking of our team, I just want to congratulate my team. Uh, hey, you know, we got we to gotta shout these things out every once in a while. But uh, we've just won another international award for best one-to-one -one promotional marketing. Um, again, international, so I could say in the world, which is pretty cool stuff. But uh, definitely check it out. Again, just a, an absolute machine to help you, again, just do a hell of a lot more business. Uh, MyShow101.com, click on marketing. Now, as you know, we are also on a push to get to 100 reviews on iTunes. And so I'd like to ask you, if you haven't yet, please go over to this link. It's ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. Uh, give us a nice, you know, five stars. I mean, don't, don't even bother with the four. Just go five. Uh, give us a nice review. Tell us how much you love the show. We would be incredibly grateful if you did that. Uh, for all of you that have done so, uh, the team was just telling me yesterday, we are well on our way to that 100. And uh I'm just so humbled. I am super pumped. Like it is, it is the coolest thing to be able to go to an event and people are like, Hey man, I love your podcast or people follow it. So, uh, I'm grateful for every single one of you. Thank you. Also want to take a quick moment to mention right now that it is a really, really critical time in our business. Um, not only are the markets changing, but you know, between business, between personal, we are in Q4, we are approaching the end of the year. And right now is that moment to really finish off on a very high note and set ourselves up to finish off on an even higher note so that we can start 2023, well, going next level, going to new heights. It takes planning, it takes effort, and well, hey, that's exactly what our one-to-one -one coaching program will do for you. We're going to help you plan it out, we're going to help you uh, action it out, we're going to help you achieve it all. So again, whether you're new in the business, whether you've been around a few years, whether um, you've been around longer than a few years, like which, whatever it's been, My Show 101 one-to-one -one coaching is your answer. I just want to encourage you, inquire with us today, uh, connect with my team, go to mindshow101.com, click on coaching, and one of our Mindshare specialists will be in touch with you to set up a, uh, a consultation call. Today's episode is number 204. She's an international realtor and author who specializes in luxury waterfront properties, primarily in Muskoka, Ontario. She's a founding member of Women Empower Women, a group that was formed to empower all women to live life courageously, embrace vulnerability, collaborate, connect, and lean into what makes them truly feel alive. She's also founded a company called Finding the Beauty Within to help younger women with their self-worth build confidence and all the struggles that they face through becoming a woman. She's a former Miss Canada Tourism, which catapulted her love for helping others and for philanthropy. She's come a long way, but it wasn't until she truly developed her own self-worth and her inner beauty that she became a success story. And she's on a mission to impact the world and inspire others to follow their dreams. 
Joining me on this episode of the Mindshare Podcast is international realtor and author, Holly Carroll. Holly, welcome to the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, can I just say it's such an honor to be on this show because I have been watching the Mindshare podcast for a very long time now, and it's often in my morning routine. Oh my God, I'm so yes. grateful for you. I'm so <laughs> grateful. That is amazing. Yes. Yeah, so this is a this is a manifestation come true to be on this on this uh, podcast. So thank you so much. You know, you make it's like all the warm and fuzzies right there. I got to take a moment to enjoy that. Thank you. Seriously, that means a lot to us. It really does. You know, and like, you know it, right? As you're out there and you're and, and we want to get into all this stuff with you today, because I mean, exactly what you're doing of building your empire and inspiring others along the way. Um, I got to tell you, you know, as I started to like literally like and, and like I'd say it for a minute, like like for the first time, really go through your Instagram feed and like look at all the messaging. Uh, I love it. I think it is it is powerful stuff. And I, I say that very sincerely. Like I think for, you know, first anybody that's not following, it's at Holly and Carol on Instagram. Uh, go check her out. But the messaging is wicked. You know, it is it, it truly is. It's value. Right. And we talk a lot about value and um, values defined as as motivate, educate, inform and inspire and that is exactly what you were up to is inspiring a whole ton of people so uh yeah just big kudos to you for for absolutely crushing it out there on a regular basis thank you so much um so tell me this two years ago you had a dream of selling real estate and, and correct me if i'm off on my timelines all right i tried to do my, my research here but um selling you know uh, real estate in muskoka and like i mean i think it's like two years later yep. you're like well on your way to building your empire so like I guess I'd say this, why is it so important to have dreams? And what do you believe is the first step to bringing those dreams to life? The first step is believe in yourself. Oh, I like that. Huge. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't trust yourself, nobody else will. Second, the big, big thing is the people that you surround yourself with. In the event that you may have self-doubt, these other people will bring you back up and help you believe yourself again. <laughs> there you right? go. So you got to believe in you and you got to have a great support network around you, folks that are probably in a similar mindset as you as well. Absolutely. And then people that you could probably be pretty blunt with and like you could accept their bluntness too of like, hey, you could be so much better if you did like this or like whatever. I mean, yeah, sometimes you need a slap across the face. <laughs> i know you do that with your coaching for sure not literally but yeah you know we're a little bit more of like the you know forwardness about it i don't like the sugar coat i don't think we need the sugar coat <laughs> so i actually have this great analogy that i'd love to share i've been dying to share this um so it's a reference i heard from steve harvey and it talks about fleas <laughs> yes i'm talking about fleas all right roll with it i'm in i'm in i'm in Okay, fleas have a 36 inch vertical leap. Okay, they have the, the highest vertical leap out of all the bugs per size. Okay, <laughs> so bear with me here. Stay with me here. If you captured a flea and you put it in a jar and you put the lid on, the flea will jump and it'll hit its head. And eventually, the flea will only jump just a little bit high, just enough to not hit his head. They put another flea in there. Same thing happens. Now, if they have baby fleas, the baby fleas are born with a 36 inch vertical leap. But because their parents and the other people in the jar were teaching them to only jump four to five inches, they will only jump four to five inches. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story. <laughs> I'm, still in. I'm, still, I'm still focused. <laughs> about fleas is because it's so important to be around other people that have their lid off the jar that know how hard you how high you can jump and trust me if you're only jumping four to five inches or whatever your jump is hypothetically speaking like whatever your reach is right now believe me you have more reach in you and be around people that have more reach so i say like Maurizio umansky cat and C. bailey they have they don't have their lid on trust me <laughs> That is awesome. They do not have their lid on. Well, this is this is like uh, like that analogy of like you know you're a byproduct of like the five people you spend the most time with. Yep. Right. Like it comes right back to that, and I think I think the you know the learning moment there is like look around your network right now, look around at the people that you're surrounded with. What are they believing? Yeah. What do they think of themselves? What are they trying to achieve? 
you know, and if, if they're trying to achieve or believe less than you do, it might not be the right group because again, they're only going four or five inches. Right. <laughs> and I, you know, and I even keep take it a little bit further because I'm all about laws of attraction and you know who you are, you attract mm -hmm. Think about the clients that you want to attract. Cause some people are all about money and success. It's like, well, I want my clients also to want to change the world because you know, you know, this in real estate, you're, you're, you're basically engaged to these people. <laughs> so, it's, it's better if you attract really good people into your network, not just wealthy people. <laughs> and I imagine hence why part of that, your message is, is so deep the way it is. Yep. So as we look then and go, you know, I want to attract the right people. I want to grow. I want to continue to like get to that next level. What's your focus and process? Okay. And, and I, I bring this up because to where we are in the year right now, I think this is important for everybody. Cause again, I'm, I'm very big on this stuff. Um, and I've seen the way it's changed my life over the past number of years of doing so. And, and I'll tell you like years before then I've said this many times before, and a lot of people have heard this, like I used to sit there and go, Oh, here we go. You want me to write down my goals? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make a shit ton of money. Can we keep moving please? Right. <laughs> you know, and I used to say like a bajillion dollars, but like no clue how many zeros a bajillion had. So it was like, I didn't even write shit down. Right. But, but I imagine you're a goal setter. Big and I'm curious to know, like, what is your process? How do you focus on it? How do you stay focused on, like, first you set them, but then there's the daily focus of, like, remember to actually go after them. How do you do that? What's your process there? My huge process is um, I am already my future self. So I'm already my multimillionaire self, whatever I do, when I wake up, when I brush my hair, when I put on lipstick, when I go to the shopping center, like I am that person, my life just hasn't caught up to it yet. So I write and review my goals every single day, every single day, I write and review my goals. I also visualize. So I talk about this a lot. I visualize not just you know, me driving my vintage Bronco for everyone that knows me, they know that's my, you car. got the vintage one, not the brand new one. Oh no, <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I like one. that. Um, so I, I visualize how it feels. So a lot of people think, okay, what do I need to visualize? Do I need to get real detailed? Do I need to know exactly what color I'm wearing and whatnot? And do I have to have the same visualization each time? Now, no is my, my personal opinion. It's more about the feeling. So, for example, real estate's the vehicle that I got into, but my 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 goal is complete impact of the world to change the world. It just so happened that I'm driving the real estate vehicle gotcha. in a vintage Bronco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Right? But how do I feel? So when I visualize, I get emotional. I actually visualized before I was having a little bit of anxiety today, and I actually visualized before this Mindshare podcast because I really like this podcast so much and I really align with, with the, the values and the things that you say and, and all the guests that you've had on, I think it was like, whoa, like I have to really, you know, I have to really deliver. And I think I got a little, you know, caught up in that and I visualized and I, and there's tears rolling down my face, Aww. you know, and that's how it is. You create that feeling, then it comes to you and you have to realize why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you get up in the morning? Are you excited to get up in the morning? Are you excited about the gifts that your creator gave you? If you're not, you need to get excited and you need to get emotional. I couldn't agree with all of that more. Um, and that's where I was saying, like on a very serious note here, you know, years ago when I used to just, I used to joke about it. I'm like, I'm not writing down goals. Like, can we just fast forward this part of the <laughs> session? And now like I'm the dude on a stage or in a training class with my one-to-one -one clients being like, we got to set goals. The reason is though, and, and like, just to echo exactly what you said there, right? For me, I know that once I actually started to write them down, I was able to visualize them. Yeah, exactly. And I went the distance of like, actually like, like I say I did it, Jennifer, my wife did it, whatever. But like, we created a vision board and like, we actually have a vision board that like I look at and I look at it daily. It's the first thing I see when I open my eyes every single day of my life. The next thing I do after hydration and everything else is like, I look at my actual goals and I'm talking like my annual. Cause the, to me, the vision board is very much like it's an annual thing, but it's also a lifetime thing. Yeah. I agree. Whereas the, the goals that I'm looking at and writing down every day, those are the ones that are like, that's what we're doing today. Like that's what we're doing this week, this month, this year. That's what, that's what we're going to crush in 365 days. And that is going to take me closer to getting everything I want in life. Exactly. Right. So I, I couldn't agree with that more like reviewing them every single day that's the key to it. And I, I was wondering if you were going to go there with that because it's just about consistency. Well, and, and I think the subconscious mind um, controls a lot <laughs> of what we do. 
It really right. does. You know what I mean? Because we Everything. can't be conscious all the time. So when you wake up and you see your visions, what do you think that does to you? What do you think that does to your emotions? What do you think that does to your direction that you're going that day? And, you know, there's tons of things that I think about each day. If I don't write down my goals, then maybe I would go a different direction. And I don't want to go the long way. I'd rather go right. the short way. <laughs> um, so tell me this then. What happens when things don't go your way? Hmm. Where right. do you find the strength to keep going no matter what. Cause I mean, again, it's, it's one thing to get up in the morning, look at the goals, write them down and go, that's what we're going to do. And then all of a sudden you go outside and there's, there's traffic or it's raining. <laughs> or, and I mean, I use that as like a real simple little analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like it's not, you know, and I, I just want to say that to everybody as well. It's not that shit doesn't happen. It oh, yeah. certainly does. It's a matter of how do you stay on track? So how do you stay so on track? So two things I'd like to address to that. So I try to stay neutral <clears throat> to things that are negative. So I try not to I try not to react and then I get really excited about things that are that are positive. So I try to stay pretty neutral with my emotions. It's going to happen no matter what. I often I mean, we talked about this before we got on here. I often notice in the patterns of success and the patterns of achieving your goals that bad things start to happen right as you're going to get there. So. If you change your mindset or change your paradigm on that, if something bad's happened, that means something really good's going to happen. So you just hang on, you, you stay laser focused, you stay visualized, you stay in that future self and everything will be fine. And it usually is. I mean, you know that. <laughs> Listen, it's that analogy of like one door closes, another door opens, right? That's exactly what it is. And like, I've even explained this to my kids, right? And we all know this is like grown adults and professionals shit happens like we keep saying here it's a matter of really truly believing that hey when something there happens and like that again that cliche line of one door closed another door opens being able to see through all the negativity or all the moments of of uh emotions that are going on and go listen again it's happening for a reason i have no idea what the reason is i'm gonna find out and i don't know when i don't know where but i will find out why this is happening absolutely and again it's hard to do that in the moment it really absolutely. is but again, if you visualize, if you visualize that feeling in your future self, that won't even matter. That won't even matter because I know without a shadow of a doubt that I will make a huge impact in this world. I will be iconic. I know that nobody else can tell me different. They really can't. They could not tell me any different. I don't care if I have a shit storm for three months. I know deep down inside what I was put on this earth to do. And I'm going to I'm going to fulfill that goal. <laughs> I love it. It's a powerful mindset. It's a, so let me ask you this then, like, it's, I mean, you seem like a very ambitious person and through reading off what I did from the, the bio there, let's see, we got different ventures of real estate. We got women empowering women. We got finding the beauty within, we got Miss Canada tourism. <laughs> what do you think's made you so ambitious? Like, what, you know, it's cause I know there's people tuned in right now. They're like, oh man, like, like, first of all, there's a few people calling bullshit on us right now going, there's no <laughs> way the mindset thing doesn't work. And I know, I know some people are doing it. There's other people going, I've heard that so many times before. I just haven't yeah. been able to get there. And then there's other people being like, hell yeah, I believe, like I agree with these people completely. Yep. But it's the ambition. Like what's made you so ambitious? Yeah. And that's fair. I mean, I don't think I was always this ambitious. I mean, I wasn't always this ambitious. I've always had a little bit of a fire in me. And, you know, my mom always was stoked in that fire. So I did have really good support. My lid has been off for a while. Nice. <laughs> I love the analogy. I do. <laughs> We could use it the whole time. Um, but, you know, I, again, it, the more you listen to this kind of stuff, the more you you meditate, the more you listen, the more you have faith in the universe, God, creator, whatever you want to say, the more you have faith in that, you will build that ambition. You will. So even if you're sitting there right now and you're like, okay, that's not for me. No way. I'm not Holly. Th there is, there is a gift that you've been given that you just need to tap into yet. And if you haven't found it yet, take fucking lid off the jar. Yeah, like <laughs> you know how you know the lid's on is if you're bored, if you have time to do everything in the day, <laughs> if you tell you, people around you your dreams and they believe you, your lid is on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you hold on. I like it. Wait, 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 wait. If you tell people and they believe you, you're only like, you, you keep hitting that, that, that lid. You keep hitting that lid, right? Your dreams have you to gotta get to a point like where people are actually like, yeah, there's no way. There's no way, Holly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Different mentality. I mean, you, you probably have some dreams that, that are just like even scare you. 
Oh, hell yeah. But that's what, but that's what they're supposed to do, isn't it? Exactly. Like, that's what I've said to people. I don't, I don't really truly believe <laughs> that we're meant to hit all of our goals. I agree. I meant that I, I believe they're meant to scare the shit out of us. Exactly. Right. They're meant to push us. Like, and I've, I've, again, I've referenced this so many times before, but like, um, Kevin Hart, the comedian. Love him. Like, he's hilarious. And like, I think most people think he's hilarious and like real, real, you know, there's, there's millions of people on this earth that think he's hilarious. That's how big he's gotten. The dude, like I read his book. He still doesn't think he's made it. I know. Right. Right. Like when you look and go like, how? and he, he like truly, cause <laughs> when he tells his story, he's like, he, he's telling you about his growth and, and all his trials and tribulations. And he's telling you how he's killed it. He's crushed it. But then all of a sudden he had this epiphany and he's like, who the hell do I think I am? <laughs> and like we could sit here and be like dude you are kevin hart you can tell you exactly who you are <laughs> right but he in his own right because of how ambitious he is because yeah. of how laser focused he is because of how much he wants to continue to oh. do better for himself and do better for the world around him he's still not satisfied absolutely and i think that 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 mindset for me as i hear it from you and i hear it from so many other folks and i hear it from the books that i read on a regular basis that mindset is it that's it right there like that's absolutely. the key absolutely get comfortable with being uncomfortable that's exactly it you know and and like i have been really uncomfortable lately and and at Why? times because i've been doing some big things that have cool. really stretched me and really really you know made me grow and it and i, I often think like oh I just want to relax for a second, you know, but I know that I'm going through this and I know this is what I asked for. And I know this is what I meant for anyways. But if you're super comfortable and then, and, and you sort of lazy, you know, you're not going to have these, these wonderful moments in your life. You're not going to grow. I couldn't agree more with that. I think the, the go, go, go is, is to some degree huge. I do believe we need to, to find our own time, but as yeah. we speak about time, because you said it a moment ago as well about time and like, are you getting it all done or not? You got so much going on out there. There's so much that you're doing. Talk to me about time. Like, how do you leverage time? How do you stay organized? Are you like this person that just like totally flies by the seat of her pants on a daily basis? And like, you just, you know, there's like not really a method to the madness or are you this like super structured, organized individual? I really wish I was structured and organized, but I'm okay. not. All right. However... I do realize that I, I need to delegate. I mean, most of those things that were on my bio, it's not all me. My Women Empower Women uh, group is founded by four members. So it's not all me. And it's wonderful that we all came together. It took our lids off and we were able to inspire. And so we have four founding members and each one has like, you know, a fire inside of them that's different. Um, and even finding the beauty within, I mean, my mom helped me grow that business. So I do, I do surrender a lot to, to other people. And again, to my creator, I surrender a lot. Um, I have a whiteboard that I write every day that needs to get done. Even meditates on there sometimes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. that. <laughs> um, I wish I was a little bit more structured and it's something that I have been working on. Um, cause I do feel that, uh, I could probably track my success a little bit better and i hear that a lot on the mindshare podcast <laughs> yeah yeah that's just about the, you're like walking right into it on me right now <laughs> um so i know that i have to learn that but there's nothing i can't learn or or grow into or at least delegate so well it's uh, like you said off the top right like you're surrounding yourself with again the right people yeah. and by doing so that's what i mean so it helps us grow, right? Like if I look around at, at, at this podcast right here, this is not all me, right? I mean, I get to be the guy that's here with you and I get to be the guy on the camera and I get to do this. But I mean, without the team in the background, this stuff doesn't come together the way it is. Exactly. Right. And this is one piece of what we do on, you know, the, 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 the two different businesses that I own, right. Of, of, you know, there's moving parts and there's teams there and there's people there and it's, we can't do it all on our own. And so finding the right people, that's truly, again, how we, we start to work up to our next level. Yeah, I think real estate agents do have trouble delegating. <laughs> um, I heard someone say, actually, at Buzz Conference, little bu buzz plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, buzz plug, by the way. <laughs> uh, Very explicit on what you said there, right? <laughs> uh, what got you here won't get you there. 
Right. And I loved that. And she talked about, uh, you know, how to delegate. And it's very, very hard to delegate, I think, too, when you when you have such a powerful sort of mindset, you don't really want someone to come in and affect the mindset. However, if you have a different paradigm and, and, and attract the people that are like you, that shouldn't happen. Right. Yeah, totally. And I think, again, and, and and look, there's always a process to learning as well. As you bring people on, as you connect with people, you know, there's a, there's always going to be that sort of honeymoon stage. And then there's going to be like, the, you know, the dating stage. And there's going to be like, we're married stage. And then there's going to be like, holy shit, like, I don't even want to be close to you. Stage. you. And that doesn't happen with everybody. <laughs> but it's just cycles, right? Like you go yeah. through that stuff. And then that's, that's exactly how you find your people. And I think a good message here for everybody as well, that's very important to understand is like, this stuff doesn't just happen overnight. No. Right. Like this takes time to build. And this, this, where we come back to the goals, we come back to the vision, we come back to the ambition, we come back to the focus, right? When you are focused on the daily, it is a lot easier. It's hard to stay focused on the daily, but it's a lot easier to stay on the track and then recognize when you might have fallen off or when you need to take a little bit of a, an adjustment. Again, dare I use the word pivot? I just, it's been too played out, but um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do. It, it, it's all a learning curve. Yeah, it is. And, you know, a lot of people have different modalities and different um, structures to their day. Uh, there's obviously some that work probably statistically better. But I think that, um, you know, give yourself some chances to try something out and see what works for you. Like, I don't do the exact same thing every single day. Some days I just need to do nothing mm -hmm. and give myself grace, you know, and, and, you know, meditate and talk to God. Sometimes I just need to do that. And, and that's okay too. I mean, don't get lazy, but it's definitely okay to take a day. Um, a lot of people think that they need to do more, do more, do more. Well, sometimes slow down so you can speed up, right? Talk to me more about that. Like when we talk about time and the way we keep it organized, I'm like, I would tell you like complete opposite. And you've, you've obviously heard me say this before, but I've got everything very structured. And that's because there's so much going on in my world and not that like I'm the only guy with stuff going on. It's just, it's, it's the way it helps me stay very, you know, very much in control. Um, but beyond businesses, you know, coaching a hockey team, coaching a baseball team, having, you know, my, my, my children and my family here and, and, you know, not just, you know, my, my wife and kids, but you know, my family, my parents and my sister and everybody else, my friends making time yeah, is crucial. And it's something that, most people say they just don't have enough of. Yeah. How do you make time for you? Like, is it just again, like, like on a, like, I'm just going to not do stuff today. Or is it like, do you, do you kind of plan that out? I guess it kind of sounded like I did that. Um, I make, you know, I make a, a plan with myself that this is what I'm going to do today. And, and at the end of the day, when I give thanks and I look back at the day and things didn't get done, I'm not going to not sleep at night. And that's all I mean. I'm going to give, I'm going to give thanks to what did happen. Mm -hmm. I like to get the most important things done right away because you know, the day kind of goes somewhere else usually, or it can. Uh, I think structure is important so that you are sort of in charge of your day and not somebody else. If you have too much free time, <laughs> somebody might take that time from you. You know that too. That's, you know what, that is a big message right there is being able to control it, to be able to be in control. And we, we sort of, you know, use this term about uh, being proactive rather than reactive, yeah, I like right? That. And it's that whole idea. And I mean, look, hell, that's a pandemic in of its own. All right. And it, 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 it always comes back to the smartphones. It always comes back to the distractions. It always comes back to those bright, shiny objects, you know, and, and dare I say, even, you know, people trying to keep up with the Joneses. Right. Yeah, of just like all of a sudden switching everything you're doing because, well, we see other people doing it. And I think that it's important for people to find in their own right, you know, what makes me tick, what brings me happiness, what brings me success in life and how can I try to stay on again on that track as often as possible? Exactly. I, right? I have this on my phone and I love this. It's get into the habit of asking yourself, does this support the life I'm trying to create? So. Right. If things come up, you know, and you're wondering, or if somebody else looks like they're doing something better or whatever, or you're comparing, remember your goals, remember your vision, slow down, 
ask yourself and go within. I do, I do a lot sometime for myself every day. Mm -hmm. to just do, no, I don't say do nothing because that's not true. I just mean, sit and listen Yeah. to, to, to you know, to God. Really. Well here. Okay. So this is the quiet time. Like you just mentioned, um, you're listening to the Mindshare podcast. I appreciate yes. it, right? <laughs> and so did that, though, like personal development, right? How much how much emphasis do you put on that for yourself on the daily? Like I'm talking, you know, taking time to read, taking time to listen to podcasts, taking time to tune into a video, like taking time to just kind of, again, feed the brain. Every single day, day and night. It's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Now what happens so at first, when I started doing a lot of per, uh, personal development, mm -hmm. um, it was almost like, oh, you know, it was a little bit of a chore. Yeah. Now, if I don't do it, I get a little loopy. Right. And I don't feel right. And I get like anxious. And I'm like, oh, wait a sec. Did I watch TV and fall asleep last night? Oh, that's why I feel weird this morning. So they're, they're like, it is non-negotiable. I wake up in the morning. I hydrate. I visualize. I meditate. I journal. And I listen to the Mindshare podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Done. That's all she does. So if you want to know how she got to where she is, she tuned into the podcast. Show's over. No <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> and that at night, cool. at night, I give thanks. I pray. And I don't want look at my phone for like at least an hour before I go to bed. Like I don't because <clears throat> other people's mindset and other people's things will get into you. Right. And I try not to listen to anything too hype. Before I go to bed, yeah. I try to listen to something a little bit more calm. Sometimes I can't sleep. So I actually listen to like sleep affirmations or like binaural beats and just kind of go off. You know, I find, uh, I find again, that morning routine, that nighttime routine. That's, that's the kicker right there. Like everybody tuned in, like those are your moments right there for you. Right. Mm -hmm. You as an individual, um, I brought this up last week when Ryan was on the show and it was, it came out of the book, think like a monk, which I just finished reading. Love it. And it was his analogy, which I've really always thought about it this way, but it's like, it's, it's maybe not always, it had to develop in my mindset as well, but I'm saying where, you know, he was like, the minute you open your eyes and you go to grab your phone, it's like, you just opened your eyes opened up the door to your room and said thousands of people come on in and just start screaming and yelling with all your bullshit, you know, and tell me all your problems and, and stuff I don't even care about, but I'm going to start feeding my brain, polluting my brain with all of this stuff. Now I'm going to start doing that to myself because, you know, I just, I grab my phone. That's so true. Well, that analogy right there, like it, it, it's so hit home for me. And then when you look at nighttime, it's a very similar thing. It's like, how are you ever gonna you know be awake and all of a sudden close your eyes to lay down for night for the next number of hours while you just literally finished listening to everybody yell and scream about all their bullshit yeah and i'll take it a step further whatever you thought about or watched or listened to or read or saw before you go to bed that's going to replay in your mind throughout your sleep so <laughs> be careful be right. careful and pay attention to what you're feeding your brain and everything else. Um, and, and again, take it even a step further. Feed your brain something wonderful before you go to bed. And you'll probably, I mean, do the test. You'll probably wake up happier in the morning if you have something that, that is happy or positive before you go to bed. Like you can test it and come back on the Mindshare podcast. And uh, trust me, it works. I, I'll, I'll double down on that right away. Like, I mean, again, and that, that's where I, like, I always make the joke about myself of like, like the way it took me time to get there. Yeah. But as I started to do that now, even on the nights where like, I don't write down my gratitude journal and like, it just, it happens every once in a while, even on those nights, the reality is I'm still in my mind, incredibly grateful for everything that took place. Cause I've now built out that muscle. Right? Exactly. I built out the muscle for the morning routine. I built out the muscle for the evening routine. Like you said, it's like when I don't do it, I almost feel guilty. I'm like, Oh man, like, I just, I don't feel as good necessarily as when I do do it. Yeah. Right? I think the beautiful thing too, I did just, uh, just hearing what you just said that, that should be noted is when you start to do personal development, you become more self-aware. Yeah. Big time. And I, and actually at first it was a little bit scary, but then I'm like, I really like this. So you really do notice when you're not working on yourself or you're not helping others or you're not doing the things that, you know, you're, 
naturally gifted to do your night to nighttime routines or your morning routines, you really notice it. And that's beautiful. Exactly. Right. And that's, that's again, what kind of like fuels that fire to keep going. Cause now you see the other things coming to life. Right. Exactly. So here we, we, again, talking about, you know, building an empire and inspiring others, we can see where a lot of the inspiration comes from. Um, and we can see where, again, this, the, the empire is building. And I say that very seriously. Let's talk a little bit of marketing and branding to it. Cause I think that, uh, when first off a topic that obviously I love talking about, um, beyond that though, I think that when people, you know, will go and, you know, watch you on Instagram or learn from you and find out more about who you are. And I know that you're doing some stuff with the buzz, another plug, um, you know, with, <laughs> with that, you know, you are very active on social, um, you, 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 the brand continues to evolve. And like I said, you know, again, just obviously getting prepped for the show. We do a lot of the research and we try to learn and understand like what, what's driving. Um, is all of this stuff part of the master plan? Uh, what kind of results are you seeing from your strategy? Is it, is it direct business? Is it more about brand awareness? You know, talk to me about, I guess the, the, the branding and marketing, maybe if we, we look at like, again, the Instagram account for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from a real estate standpoint, um, I certainly get business from, uh, I think it's, it's a very easy thing to, to promote the Muskoka lifestyle, selling the Muskoka lifestyle, sure. which is great. Um, uh, I'm creating an experience, not just selling Muskoka. Um, so one for that, um, when it comes to my inspiration, that's literally who I am. That is who I am. And and it's not that I get wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, how do I be inspiring today? Like I want to shout it from the rooftop, some of the things that I say, and I want everyone to hear it. And so um, Instagram has become my platform to touch more people and to help more people take the lid off, you know, like that's what I'm trying to do. That is me. Like if you, if you sat across the table from me and we had dinner, like this is how I am that, that, that Instagram person that you see is how I am. In fact, I should, I tone it down sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> throw so, a little real estate in there. Well, here, okay. Yeah. You know, I think that there's, there's, um, there's a lot of people out there that are, they're scared yep. to be who they are. Yep. And much like what you just said, and I've said it a million times before, and I'll say it again, you know, the guy that you're talking to right now, I do my very, very best to be that exact same guy when you see me, you know, walking into a hockey rink, you know, baseball diamond, talking to parents, talking to teammates, talking, you know, uh, uh, being on a stage in front of people that I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to come and do these conferences. Like, it's the same guy. It's the same guy riding my Harley. It's the same guy. And that. I try to do my very best to, to continue to be real about that. Hence the lack of sugar coating. I'm not much of a sugar coating type of guy, right? Like, I'm going to tell you straight, but... I think a lot of people have a fear around that. Yeah. Did you ever have a fear around that? Did you, you know, and if so, how did you get past or what do you say to those people? Yeah, of course. Of course I had fear and I had self-doubt, but I worked on that through personal development. Cool. I got a coach. I've gotten coaches. I know you coach. You yeah. probably talk about, you probably coach that, right? Like, of course we all have fear and self-doubt, but you work on that. Like there's hope for everyone. You have that, like I said at the beginning, um, belief in yourself is everything. And I even, you even said it in my bio, like until I found my self-worth and my inner beauty, that's when I became truly successful. Like you even know, you can even go through my uh, Instagram and see when I actually found the self-worth in its core. And well, then that's kind of what I was saying. Like we, we, we went far enough back to kind of yeah. go like, let's learn, let's learn. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And it was just through a lot of healing, a lot of uh, um, switching paradigms that I had. And that's all through a coach. That's all through courses. That's if you think you don't have to do any personal development. <laughs> I'll just oh, my God. I, I, like we say that all the time to people like, oh, I don't need anything. I remember having uh, John Montgomery guy that uh won like an Olympic gold medal. And he was on the show one day and I was like, dude, do you still have a coach? He's like, are you kidding? Of course, I still have a coach. And I'm like, but you've won a gold medal. And I was trying to obviously be facetious with it, right? But I'm like, you've won a gold medal. He's like, David, how do you continue to get better? How do you go win another gold medal, right? How do you inspire others to go back and do it? Yeah, Oprah Winfrey Learning has a coach. Oprah Winfrey has a coach. There you go. Pfft. 
drop and down would, right yeah. there, right? Like, yeah, if Oprah's doing that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I would encourage you to get coaches in, in, in a bunch of different things, you know, not just on mindset. On, it's powerful. On, yeah, it's powerful. Okay, so okay. the coaching and the branding and the, the you know, the overall like Holly Carroll who's out there, with all of the, again, Instagram profile and the things that you're doing out there and, and you being who you are, we talked about attracting your people um, and finding your people. Are you seeing most of your business? And, and again, I bring this up because, again, the Instagram account is rocking. It's always going out there, which is a platform that really talks to a lot of a lot of people we know, but also like a ton of people we don't know. Yep. Do you see a lot of business from people you do know or people you don't know? Is it a mix of both? Maybe percentages there. And I'm just, what I'm trying to get to here, just before you answer that, forgive me. Yeah. <clears throat> trying to make people fully understand that all of this stuff is part of our, about the way we build Mindshare. It's part of how we build our brand identity. It's part of how we build our own identity for ourselves when we look in the mirror. That said, there's also a misconception about really where success comes from in this particular business. And I do truly believe it does come from your people. Um, where is most of it coming from? Like, are you, are you, are you doing a lot more with people, you know, or people you don't know, vice versa? What, what, what is the Instagram kind of resulting in? Just curious. Yeah. Um, so I actually take a lot of pride in saying this. It is a lot of people that I know, Cool. but at <laughs> first they, they, they wouldn't really work with me or, you know, they, they had to see me really grow. <clears throat> Again, um, you have to believe in yourself and you have to trust yourself because they can see the unauthentically what you're putting out there. So I think my success came with me actually believing I was successful. But yes, it's a lot of people that have been following me for a while. My friends, friends of friends. Um, but yeah, it's it's my friends. But now okay. they've seen my growth and seen my, yeah. So it's, I just, I think that's a good point to bring up because I think that it just reinforces that again, when you're doing this stuff, it's not just about trying to attract complete strangers, yeah. you know, but there is an aspect here of just trying to stay present within that network of people that know you, those people and reinforcing who you are, reinforcing why you're that person. Um, now beyond the social media. Yes. What else do you really rely on to go out there and help you build my chair? Yeah. So I like to do the things that I already like to do. So okay. I love charity. Um, it's okay. been in my blood, uh, especially after I won Miss Canada tourism. So I love charity and I love charity events. Now, I also like the small town mindset. So I live in a small town, really, uh, Muskoka, right? It's got a small town vibe. So I love to go to, uh, you know, the charity events around. I love to go to the community events and shake hands and kiss babies. And they'll, they'll tell somebody and they'll tell somebody and eventually real estate will kind of come up. I don't really go out there guns blazing with my, with my real estate pen on. <laughs> Good. Good. But eventually it comes up. I love, I still do the things that I love to do. It, um, and I show people that I'm a good person and I help a lot of people. And then eventually that just comes back. Um, I don't go out there generally thinking I need more business. Where's the biz? Where's my leads? I actually just get up. I do the right thing. I, I'm grateful. And, uh, you know, I'm ready for the opportunity when it comes. Now, in terms of creating those opportunities, as you've got this, again, this, this self-awareness, you know, this confidence is a big part of that. I mean, yeah, we're talking about inspiring others is a big part of that also to kind of reinforce and inspire yourself on a daily basis. Absolutely. 100%. Right? 100%. I would double down on that. And I say that for myself, like that's, that's a big part of it as well is like you have these these paradigm shifts, you have these realizations, you have these moments in life, these experiences where you go, wait a second, I do so much learning and so much, you know, personal development. I've heard that many times before. And oh my God, it's, it's like happening to me right now, or it's going on right now. How can I take that and reshare that with people? You know, because I think that that message becomes genuine. It becomes authentic. It becomes something that people tap into people that, you know, they resonate with it. Yeah. Right now to that, I, I, you know, again, on a mission to empower others, um, specifically women. How's it helping you in the long run? Is this a monetary thing? Is this a, you know, just a, a self-worth thing? Like, 
This is a calling. It's a calling that I'm fulfilling. <laughs> it is sure, though. Cool. All right, like it cool. is. I answered the call. Um, it's also something that aligns with me. And I know that because when I do it, it it's almost like I have the whole world behind me and it feels good. Right. So, you know, when you try and do something that isn't really aligned with you, it's going to feel awkward. I'm not talking about uncomfortable growth. I'm talking mm -hmm. about like when you're really in align with something. Um, it just so happened that uh, women are someone that 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 I that I'm that I'm grown to, that I'm attracted to, that you're attracted to me and it aligns. <clears throat> uh, it's a calling, though, and it, and it has been a calling that I've been fulfilling for a long time. Does that make sense? I, I yeah, no, it does. I, I would say, how did you figure that out then? It's a calling. You just started to do it. and Yeah, I just started to walk towards the light and it worked out. And now it's like me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's cool, right? Because it, like, again, it's it's that, I, I mean, we've been using this since like we started today. So it's like, there's the point where the lid is off. Yes. Right? It's like, it's finding that right there and going, wait a second. This is this is what, like, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. And I remember when I was young, like I was an international model for 17 years and I started really young. And aside from my mom, I didn't really have another woman to look up to that was doing good things. And I think a lot of younger women, um, they look up to women on social media that may or that may not be the best people role models for them, you know, and that hit me at a really young age. And to the point where I almost did some things that weren't really aligned with the things I do now growing up. And it was because an older woman that I kind of look up to was doing those things and kind of making them glamorized and making them fun, but never really telling me that they weren't that great. So I feel like that's also part of my mission as well to really show women that you can be, you know, a beautiful rock star, also kind and doing the right thing. Like you, it, there's, you know, there's a way to do it with power and grace. <laughs> what if they don't believe in themselves at that moment? Well, we're going to have to work on their belief. Okay. And that's okay. Most people time. don't. Yeah. Most people yeah. don't. That's totally point. okay. I would be surprised if they came in believing in themselves. Totally. See, that's an interesting one because I think a lot of people get deterred by that and they're like, well, but I'm not there. I'm not strong. You know, how many times I've had people say like, but why me? Why do people care about what I have to say? Why do people care about, you know, what, again, exactly that. What do I have to say? And everyone I think part of that is, yeah, it's a lack of belief for sure. Yeah. I think everyone has a gift and everyone has some, a story to tell. Everyone has something in them that needs to come out everyone needs to take the lid off <laughs> every yes, single one of us and it's okay so listen i sometimes i don't believe in myself i obviously i've gotten to the point where most of the time i do but again we talked about why that is um but it's okay if you don't believe in yourself then spend a little time believing in yourself google how to believe in yourself like watch the mind share podcast do some things where they talk about belief you know what I mean? Go to Buzz Conference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do to create your belief and maintain your belief. It's not like we just woke up and we have this fire on our side of us and we've always believed in ourselves. No, like I haven't. I had to work on my belief and I spend time daily working daily. on it. Daily. That's the key. It's the repetition and consistency of that. Because I think it's, again, for so many people listening right now, that oh, these guys, they've done this and they've done that between you and I, you know. But no, it's like, it's a daily, it's daily work, right? It is part of that every single day to kind of get up and again, reset, you know, go through the day, finish off, have that sort of book into your day and then, Hey, do it all over again tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And it, 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 it comes back to consistency and repetition. I do have um, a little tip to help you with your belief. Okay. Yeah. And maintaining your belief. Do it. Um, I was reading a great book. It's called Gap versus the Gain. It's incredible. Gap. Um, Gap. G A P versus the Gain. Okay, cool. Gap versus the Gain, Gap and it talks about measuring your success backwards. Okay, so I also call it the badass list, and I talk about this in my Finding the Beauty Within workshop program. So if you're I like having, badasses. yeah, a badass I'm list. Like we badass. we got some. Everyone's got a badass list though. So if you sit down, okay, and you're having a day where you're full of doubt and you're not believing in yourself and you have something going on, okay, 
write out your badass list. So what have you done in the last 30 days, you know, that you didn't think you could accomplish or that you're very proud that you did and write that out. Heck, read it in front of the mirror and smile and say, you are a badass. Like that will help you create your belief. Trust me. <laughs> that will help. So, and okay. When- give me an example of something we put on that list. So I'm looking back and I'm, I'm feeling a little bit down today. And you're like, listen, go write out your badass list. I like this. What, 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 what kind of something am I writing? What am I looking for here? Because what if I'm sitting there dumbfounded? I'm like, Holly, I haven't done shit in the past 30 days. And if you, I, but, but, but the thing is this, this is the fun part about it. It's like, if you actually were watching me for the past 30 days, you might actually sit back and be like, dude, I've just written down this entire list. What are you talking about? Right. So how do people believe that there is something that they should be writing down? Because we have the same problem when it comes to gratitude. I don't have nothing to be grateful for. You're like, what? How don't you, what? Like, you can't. No, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because people are like, oh no, um, I don't think so. It could right. be as easy as I got up a half an hour earlier one morning and did a little bit more. It could ah, be okay. that, um, you know, when somebody said something to me, I didn't react. Okay. It could be as easy, as easy as that. It could be personal, professional. It could be physical. You could like, there's something that you did there. Believe me, there's something that you did. That and makes could, you proud of you. That makes you proud of you in the last 30 days. And the beautiful thing about that is, is that anything that bad happened, it doesn't seem as bad because now you have the positive things that happened to you in the last 30 days or 90 days. You see, that's why I say to everybody, like, I, I, I guess I might call like my gratitude list, like journaling at nighttime, like my badass list. Absolutely. Like, no, no, no joke. Like, I mean, it's one of those like that, that mental reset every single night like dude you got up today you slugged through you did all sorts of stuff lots of good happened there was some stuff that that maybe didn't go exactly how you wanted to go but you know right down at nighttime and recognize the good yeah i think there says something too about closing the day right yeah totally. you know? i think that's really important that of course closing it with gratitude but a lot of people they just run on one day and it's been a whole week you know what so. about what about those people that uh Cause we got a lot of this where, and we brought up the social media, we brought up like watching others and, and, you know, checking that out and people want to emulate others, you know, unfortunately too many agents and, and, and keeping to the topic of, of just, you know, our, our industry for a moment here. Um, too many agents are trying to be like everybody else, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. What do you say to those people? Again, I think we need to visualize what we want personally by ourselves. I think we need to visualize what we want. Why did you get into real estate in the first place? You know, and if the answer comes from your ego, you need to go back and sit back down. (laughs) Like it. Yeah. Um, So what do you want out of this? Like, what is the end goal? Because if you remember what the end goal is, you probably won't spend so much time comparing yourself to others. You know, there's nothing wrong with... There's nothing wrong with seeing somebody else's success and knowing that it's possible. There's a difference between seeing someone else's success and being like, okay, well, if they can do it, I can do it. But if you're trying to to be somebody else, it's not going to look good. It's not going to look like you. So you're going to spend a lot more time going around. This is where I would say to people as an action step here and everybody tuned in, you know, write this stuff down right now, write down your lifestyle list. Okay. What do you like? What do you love? Yep. What makes you who you are? And when you do that and you have this internal realization that I'm going to write down the things that make me, me. Okay. And this is, this is with, um, you know, this is not for anybody else to look at. This is not for anybody else to judge me on. This is about me looking at and going, I'm going to be very real with myself right now. I'm going to write this stuff down and say, what, what makes me, me. Yep. Right. And again, coaching and helping other people that makes me, me, my family makes me, me. Playing hockey, playing playing baseball makes me me. Watching my sports makes me me. <laughs> Getting on my Harley and being able to go out and do my yoga on my Harley. And I know everybody's <laughs> going like, what? Yeah, you got to understand. that. That's like where I do my Zen right there. But that makes me me, right? So I'm going to be me. And the more I be me, well, hell, at least the more comfortable I am with me. me. And the more and comfortable was- we are, the more we believe in ourselves, like you've been saying. Exactly. And I would take it a step further and write out your strengths. Cool. Write out All your right. strengths, you know, write out your strengths, 
also kind of like a badass thing, but write out your strengths and your lifestyle. I love that. I absolutely love that. And that could be a great reminder whenever you start comparing yourself to to others, write this list. Because you are the gift. Trust me, you are the gift. Find your gift because you are the gift. The world needs you who you are. Give me, give me, um, give me some of the habits that you feel at least for yourself. And I think we've talked about a lot of them today. Okay. Um, habits that you believe for yourself that have helped you, you know, become a successful realtor and that others could use and right now and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tap into what you just said. And I'm going to try to create that for myself. What are what are some of the things that people should be doing on the daily? And again, I think we list them, but I, I think it's a really nice way to bring a little bit of, a, again, a, a book into today's conversation. Yeah. Um, wake up early as, as you can. <laughs> I wake up at five. <laughs> what time do you go to bed, though? Nine. Ah, see, I like my kids aren't even in bed at nine yet. That's like, fair. So for me, it's yeah, like, let's well, go to bed. But right. But once the kids go to bed for me, it's like I still need a few hours to like, like wind down. Exactly. I'm still up by like six though. That's yeah. Like- and I don't want to <laughs> emphasize the timing. I just think that if you are waking up a little bit later, you could probably wake up earlier, okay. but um, give you like, really the whole point is to give yourself time in the morning to hydrate, visualize, meditate, journal, listen to the mind chart podcast. Yeah. In, in other words, f- fuel your brain and set your attention for the day. So you become this force field that nothing really can penetrate, right? That's the whole point of your morning routine, okay? Write your write your goals out and review your goals every single day and take one small action every single day to propel you to, to your dreams. Once, you're probably going to take more than one, but one small action every single day to propel you to your dreams. I would also add, if you want a real accelerator to become successful help others. I was going to bring up the idea of reciprocity (laughs) right there and be like, you know, how much emphasis do you put on that? But I think the overall of today's combo really showed like, you do want to give back. You are out there focused on other people on a regular basis. And I think that that's probably part of what again, leads to building up the empire. Yeah. It's not just helping the others and helping the world, which is going to make you feel good. But if you're ever in a high anxiety, if you're ever feeling like off, if you go and help another person, guaranteed anxiety gone, guaranteed worry gone, guaranteed self-doubt gone, period. And you're Yeah, but, but, but I don't have time. I'm so busy. You can figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it right there. It's true. It's true. It doesn't have to be this huge thing where, you know, you're going down to the soup kitchen it's just something little. Like, did I help somebody today? Okay, maybe I should call somebody and see if they're okay. And you know, throughout the day, you're getting downloads to help somebody. You know that. If you listen yeah. within, you you know that already. Well, I'll say, again, it's the power of reciprocity, right? Giving you shall receive. It's the whole thing is you cannot give expecting to receive. You just have to give. And the more you give, it's incredible how you do receive. It's true. But you got to be genuine about it. Of course. And it becomes, it just becomes you. Like a lot of people are like, oh no, I wouldn't do that. And they're kind of, you know, all into themselves. But I I challenge them to maybe go a week with maybe helping somebody each day. And trust me, you're going to receive more than you give. I will double down on that. So uh, Holly, tell us about your book, Selling Secrets. Uh, I know that uh, you've got the book out. Um, Admittedly, I have not had the chance to read it yet. Okay. Uh, we'll be doing so for sure. Um, but uh, tell us tell us about that because I, I definitely want to help you sort of promote that uh, for a moment here and see if we can get more people picking up on and reading it because I think there's there's an am- amazing message coming from you, uh, again, both today on the show as well as, again, through your, your your various channels that you have out there. And I think a lot of people should, should find the power to, to go tap into that. Absolutely. So my book is a basic book about selling and buying houses. I actually made the book for um, my sellers and my clients. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically just a how to to get back to basics to uh, uncomplicate the transaction of listing and selling a house. Cool. Okay. So it's really made for your buyers and sellers. Yes. However, I'm sure that we could, like, you know, people from the industry could probably tap into it and be like, hey, let me learn something. 
Absolutely. It's a very factual book. Um, I do have it on my Instagram and anyone watching can have a free copy. Nice. I, I'm also coming out with, with a new book called uh, Closing Deals and Heels. And it, it it's a little bit more inspiring and my story through, through self-worth to net worth. And is this like when we talk about story, we're not going to give away too much, but is this going back in time, talking yeah. about stuff that people don't know and then, you know, sort of to like where we are today? Absolutely. And it gets very cool. vulnerable. So, <laughs> All right. Interesting. When, 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 when's that one dropping? Um, I am. It's funny because I thought it was going to drop in, in the winter or sorry, in Christmas, um, but I keep changing it. So as I evolve, I go back and I change the chapter. So it's a bit of a yeah, labor yeah. of love. So I'd like to say soon, but it's not coming out until uh, I, I maintain the belief or create more belief. <laughs> okay. So it's so still a work in progress as always. Still a work in progress. Yes. All right. You see that everybody? It's, it's, it's never just like we got there, we've hit it, and now we're there. Um, keep the lid off. I like that message today. I like that. I like that. Uh, so yeah, check out her book, Selling Secrets. And then uh, the next one will be coming out shortly. But I'm sure if you tapped into uh, to the one book and you follow her, you're going to hear about the next one. Um, how do you know it's been a successful day for you? It's all a feeling really. Yeah. It's a feeling. <laughs> she did not use the word money. <laughs> it's just not. Wanna, I just want to reinforce, reinforce that. <laughs> Holly, give us a, give us some final words, some tips for anybody that's tuned in right now. Um, you know, about, uh, again, self-worth, belief, a lot of what we talked about today, you know, really, really just, you know, the inspiration that you're sharing, the building the empire. How can they get out there and build some mind share? Give us some final words, please. I dare you to have a creative and a collaborative mind versus a competitive mind. Ooh. I'm leaving it with that. All right, done. Holly Carroll, everybody, Mindshare Podcast. Holly, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Uh, sincerely, I love the message that you're delivering out there. Uh, keep it up. Keep believing in yourself because you certainly are inspiring a, a whole ton of people. Um, and again, like I said, uh, as I was going through it, I just, I, I, I absolutely, absolutely love the message. So uh, keep doing you. It's definitely working. Thank you. Where, where can people find you? At Holly Ann Carroll on Instagram and Holly Carroll on Facebook. Wicked. Check her out, follow her, go to Instagram and uh, make sure you're doing the follow. Make sure you're tuning into the message, uh, uh, you know, reach out to her if anything, if you need anything, I'm sure that, uh, you know, she's always there. But uh, Holly, a big, big thank you for, uh, for making the time for us today. Really appreciate it. We'll see you again soon. You're either listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, maybe you're watching live broadcast, maybe you're on Spotify, maybe you're on one of the many different podcast platforms that are available to you. Uh, maybe you went to my website, mindshare101.com. And uh, hey, while you're on my site, make sure to grab your uh, ultimate marketing bundle. This is a 31-page ebook. It is absolutely free. It's got a 90-day social media content calendar in there, um, all of it to help you build more mindshare so that you can get more market share. Of course, if you want to talk about personalized one-to-one -one coaching, an in-person keynote talk for your upcoming event, um, virtual training, just get in touch with us. Connect with my team. One of our MyShare Experience Coordinators will definitely connect back with you. We'll set up a time to talk, have a little consultation, learn about what you're looking to achieve and well, how we are going to help you do exactly that. Also, don't forget, please, that our Push to 100 is on. All you got to do is go to, to ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. Big five stars, six if they let you. Nice little review about how much you love the show. But uh, on a serious note, I would be very, very grateful if you took a moment to do that. So, again, that's ratethispodcast.com forward slash Mindshare 101. Uh, if you haven't yet, connect me on Facebook at Dave, Mindshare 101. Connect me on Instagram at David Greenspan. 101. I want to thank Virginia Munden and the Buzz Conference for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't checked them out yet, be sure to visit their site, www.thebuzzconference.com. Follow them on Instagram at The Buzz Conference. Keep tabs on all of the amazing events that they're always hosting, including getting your, your latest copy of the Buzz Digital Magazine, as well as securing your tickets for Disruption. Again, taking place March 30th, 2023 in Toronto. Um, again, go over to www.thebuzzconference.com. We are proud to have the Buzz Conference as an ongoing sponsor of the Mindshare Podcast. Of course, I also want to thank Kids Keep In Touch Systems for sponsoring today's episode. Remember that the WOW Calendar Early Bird Ordering is now open. If you haven't checked us out yet, go to my site, mindshare101.com, and click on Marketing. This has been another episode 
of the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you for tuning in.